the end of 1967, Bob Dylan comes out with John Wesley Harding. I, I, I did a review. I did all of the Bob Dylan 60s albums. Um, I have a playlist. You can check out the actual, you know, review of it or whatever. But I'm just going to go kind of do a shortened thing here on John Wesley Harding. Um, you know, the first time when I heard it, I... I felt a little jarring, you know, and I felt, eh, you know, this is different. You know, when you listen to this album, it, it's totally different than what Dylan had already. I mean, going back to Blonde on Blonde and Highway 61, and just to take a a complete, complete turn. And, uh, you know, and it's basically very, very basic. You know, you got Bob Dylan on guitar, acoustic harmonica, you got uh, Charlie McCoy on bass, um, Kenny Buttrey on drums, and Pete Drake on uh, on two songs, however. Bob Johnston produced the album. And uh, I just want to go through the songs really right, you know, really, really quick. Um, a month after this, um, January 68, they um, they had a funeral for, uh, for Woody Guthrie. And uh, that was very, very heartfelt at the time you know but uh, I mean just even the album cover I mean it just feels like whoa doesn't that feel a little bizarre <laughs> you know there's Bob there and you got these what you call them they're maybe like Native Americans and this guy happened to drop by I don't know he was like a maybe uh what's his name I can't think of you know Bob Dylan's uh manager Albert Grossman I believe that was like his friend or something or whatever. And we can all probably talk forever about the stupid, you know, we can, we, we can always, <laughs> about the Beatles on the, the Beatles faces on the, the oak tree. It's like, come on now. But anyways, you know, it, it's such a goof. I mean, 1967, you had, when you think of 67, you think the summer of love, right? You know, you think of that. You think of all these iconic albums like Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix. The psychedelic LSD was on a high, you know. You had Sgt. Pepper, of course. Uh, a little bit later at the end of the year, probably around the time the, this album came out. You know, you had the Stones doing uh, their Santanic Majesty's Request. And uh, you know, Peanut Butter Conspiracy. The, the Peanut Butter Conspiracy is spreading. Ooh, you know, you got that, you know, Kaleidoscope. You had all these weird bands, all these weird, you know, the Strawberry Alarm Clock. You had all these psychedelic bands. You had all these Baroque bands. Insight by, uh, you know, by the Association. And Everything's Playing by The Love and Spoon. Another album that came out at the same time as this. So, yeah, you had all the psychedelic, you had all that stuff coming out. But here's Bob Dylan being pretty much saying, hey, you know, no, I want to go in my own direction, do my own, you know, see how things work, see how things happen, you know. Yeah, and by the way, the Harding was kind of a little bit of a, a joke or whatever. You know, it's supposed to be hard in, but um, yeah, I just want to go through the songs. I, I love the opening track, John Wesley Harding. John Wesley Harding was a friend to the poor and had and he had a hand or had a gun in every hand which kind of begs the question how many <laughs> how many guns did he have yeah you know, that's that's funny oh i love the i love the second track on the album as i went out one morning to breathe the air around Tom Payne i love the song i love the rhythm i love Kenny Buttrey's I love his metro metronomic beat, you know, it's so cool. And it's such a great song to open opportunities, you know. What what is it? What an album. And and even the album too has so many different opportunities. That's the thing. Like you can just have your own discussion, make a short story about all these songs on the album. And it 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 would hey, it would be such a great it would be a great way to just figure out what does the song mean, you know? Because when you listen to Bob Dylan, you know, it's like you, you just never know 
what he'll come up with, or maybe perhaps maybe the, you just don't know. You just don't know what to expect from the song or the meaning, you know. So I love it, and I, I dream I saw Saint Augustine. That is a really beautiful song. I dreamed I saw Saint Augustine, and I love that voice for what's to come. You know, further down the line, you know, Nashville and New Morning, or a, excuse me, not New Morning, but Self Portrait. A little bit of New Morning, but definitely Self Portrait. Um, yeah, this beautiful song I dreamed I saw Saint Augustine, and oh man, what can deny? The song that comes after that, all on the Watchtower. Are you kidding me? You know, Hendrix made it a hit a year later, and almost, almost every, every, everybody had done the song, if not, you know. And you know, this is going to be a song that they'll they'll play, of course, in his concert set list. It's just a wonderful song, you know, and it just has that jabbing guitar. You know, he's just really getting into it. It's a fan, one of the most I think one of those greatest later Dylan songs, I think, in my opinion, you know, fantastic. Um, the Battle of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest. I'm not really digging this one. And I, I mean, I never really cared about it, but this is the longest song on the album. It's about five minutes. And I just, I just never really, I just never really felt the song as much. You know, I mean, I respect it and all, but it's just not like, uh, it's it's odd in a way, but, you know, it's not a song that I care to really like as much on the album. But, you know, is what it is. Okay, and then after that is Drifter's Escape. This is another really good one. A um, little bit of a twangy feel, a little bit of a twangy sound. I kind of like it. it. It's fun, you know. Um, and then the second side is Dear Landlord. I really like this one, you know. Got a little bit of piano going, you know, it's a little bit of a you know, little bar piano tune here. And, uh, yeah, once again, you can always open the opportunities of the meaning of the song, you know. People say it's about Grossman. People say it's about Dylan himself. I mean, you know, you know how it is. Okay, and then I, I love a, a Lonesome Hobo. I am a lonesome hobo. I love it, man. It's just that, God, man, just that, deepness into his to his to the lyrics in that song it's just fantastic um and also the uh, pity the poor immigrant another great one you know with that harmonica as well just a beautiful song and then the wicked messenger i i love the wicked messenger you know it has a little bit of an ascending and you know you can tell of how dylan plays it distinctively plays it's a it's a really cool song the wicked messenger and then the last two down, down on the cove and i'll be your baby tonight um they're okay i mean i'm not like big on them but um down, down on the cove definitely something you would have heard previously on you know something like you know like highway 61 or blonde and blonde once again and then i'll be your baby tonight definitely looks forward to you know Nashville, which definitely reminds me of, um, you know, a song that closed off that album, which is, um, Tonight I'll Be Staying Here With You, it has a little bit of a similar, um, a similar approach. Um, yeah, so this came out in December of 67. This was, however, Dylan, this was one of his last albums to be issued in mono, because Nashville Skyline was only in stereo, it was never in mono, I think. And, um, yeah, you know, definitely a lot of, um, Bible verses, definitely a lot of that, you know, maybe some of religious, you know, um, figurative stuff, you know, and some, uh, for, you know, just kind of some of that, you know, and a lot of short story stuff, you know, I think Dylan definitely, he, he did well on this album, you know. But anyways, folks, um, let me know. John Wesley Harding is a good album. You know, I, I don't think I don't pull it off the shelf as often, but, you know, it's still, I still like it. Okay, folks, bye-bye.